Hello everyone, welcome to the practice session. So we have been discussing the steps of exercise two. In exercise two, we have been trying to observe the body and the interaction of the self with the body. While doing this, we observe the self and the body at, as two distinct realities at step one. In step two, we try to observe the transaction between the self and the body. And we could see that there is transaction of only information between the self and the body. There is no material exchange taking place there. In step three, we could see that I instruct the body and I read the sensation from the body and it is the self, the I, which is the decision maker. It's not the body. The body is just a material entity and there as an instrument of the self. In step four, we could see that there are various sensations in the body, but I am at a distance from the sensation. I am neither the sensation nor a part of the sensation. In step five, we could see that there are three sources of sensation. One, the events taking place inside the body. Two, the events taking place outside the body in terms of some physiochemical changes. And three, the behavior of the other person. And we could see that whatever sensation I read from the body, I associate some meaning to it. And the meaning is based on my sanskar. So if my sanskar is based on understanding, then I respond. If my sanskar is based on assuming some preconditioning, I react. And the same is expressed by the body. And we try to observe this particular thing in, <clears throat> and we try to observe this particular thing in multiple steps. And this is something that we have accomplished so far in exercise two. So we'll discuss step six in the session today. And I hope we are able to see this very clearly that we are doing these exercises for developing ourselves. And in that process, we are able to develop our understanding as well as we are able to purify our sanskars, our accumulated feelings and thoughts, isn't it? So as we have been mentioning that through all these steps, essentially we are trying to see the coexistence of self and body, the self being the uh, conscious entity and the body being the material entity. And there is only exchange of information between the self and the body. And this is something that we are trying to observe at a very minute level. These are the seven steps that we are going through. Now in step 6a, we are saying that if the sanskar is based on assumptions, then there is reaction and this is enslavement. So if my sanskar is based on assumptions, right? then I am not in a state of continuous happiness within. So what do I do? So I keep seeking for happiness from outside, either from some sensation or to get some feeling from the other. And when I'm trying to get some feeling from the other, that is again an information that I'm getting from the body. Okay, somebody saluting me is again a behavior of the other that I'm able to see through sensation. So we keep on seeking happiness from outside. And then my decisions are influenced by sensation. If I like the taste, I become happy. I feel excited. So I like to continue with the taste and I crave for it. So I try to crave for it. I cling to it. I get attached to it. And then I decide in favor of a pleasing emotion and I react with it. So this is a reaction within. If I dislike the taste, I become unhappy. Again, I become excited. And then I like to discontinue with the taste. So there is aversion inside. So you see that there is craving or aversion taking place inside the self. And then I decide against an unpleasant emotion and I react within. Does it happen with you or not? So you'll see that if you are not in a state of continuous happiness, then uh, you are going to seek happiness from outside. And whenever you seek happiness from outside, so it is either through some sensation from the body or feeling from the other. And here again, when you try to receive the feeling from the other, it is through sensation only. So if you like the taste, you keep on craving for that taste. If you dislike it, then you have an aversion for that taste. So for example, you feel that you are unhappy within and music may relax you, isn't it? And then you have a craving for that music. Now, let's say you are fond of one kind of music and somebody turns some other kind of music. So you have an aversion for that. The same sound, which may be liked by somebody else is being disliked by you. Okay. Because you are disliking that taste. But if the music that you like is turned on, then you have a different kind of feeling. Okay. You feel attached to that music. You try to crave for that music, cling to that music. So this is just one example of music. 
it could be of some sight it could be of some smell it could be of some touch some taste through tongue isn't it some delicious food some beautiful uh, scenery some uh, smell that you you are fond of and we'll see that either we like or dislike certain tastes and then we either crave for it or we try to go for aversion and this keeps on happening in the cell isn't it now you see that this is all reactions this is all enslavement enslavement because i am depending on something outside for my happiness and whenever i am dependent on something outside for my happiness then i am enslaved because it may or may not continue it may be there or may not be there isn't it, it is not definite and certainly it is not universal so if in a family four people are there and everybody has a different taste of music then you can see that we cannot be together okay enjoying the same kind of music because somebody will like it somebody will dislike it and again since we are dependent on something outside for happiness there is no continuity of happiness within and then what happens no i may express my reaction outside through the body so the, so it could be to the physiochemical changes for example over dressing when it is cold so let's say it is winter season there is cold outside and you are too much afraid of losing your health and you then put on much more clothes than required you over dress yourself it may be to the feeling that the other person is expressing for example over evaluating the competence without trust or intention or doubting the intention and getting irritated so these kinds of things could be there so somebody is expressing some feeling so if somebody is over evaluating you praising you then you try to continue with that but if somebody is uh, criticizing you you try to avoid it so fine whenever somebody is criticizing you need to know what kind of program has to be made if somebody is appreciating you need to know what kind of program has to be made but if you feel attached to a particular kind of sound that is coming from the other or it could also be to the state of the body for example calling a doctor for a headache or taking a fever very lightly so these are various kinds of reaction that keep on taking place so even if you have mild pain in the head you may call a doctor okay or take a lot of medicines it could be the other way around also if you have fever and you feel like ignoring it not taking care of your body so if i do not have the right understanding within if i try to uh, ensure my happiness through some sensation from outside then these kinds of reaction will keep on taking place so a typical example is like if somebody starts praising you and you feel that this is going to make you happy you try to continue with this but if somebody is criticizing you you try to avoid it you see that in neither of the situations the other person is rightly evaluating you so there is no definiteness of happiness there is no continuity of happiness but you try to continue with that or you try to avoid it completely so these are all reactions this is enslavement and of course the happiness is not going to continue in this kind of state i hope you are able to see this are you able to see this just try to find out now the other possibility is that the sanskar is based on understanding and then we are able to respond we are self organized within so i continue to be in a state of harmony happiness based on right understanding within i make use of the sensation to make right evaluation of the other right of the body or the outside world and then decide how to respond how to be mutually fulfilling so i try to be mutually fulfilling in all these cases so whether it is some physiochemical change in the environment so how cold it really is i rightly evaluate it and then decide what to wear what not to wear the feeling that the other person is expressing and their state of being for example expressing excitement or anger so they don't have the right understanding they need help so what can i do to assure them how do i express the right feeling right <clears throat> how do i express the right feeling for example respect and then help them to develop the right understanding so if i have the right understanding within so the feeling that is being shared with me the words that are being spoken by the other with those things one second so if i have the right understanding then i listen to what the other is saying if the other is in a unhappy state i am able to evaluate it rightly and then i try to become a help to the other i try to complement the other so that the other can 
so let's say somebody is uh, praising you a lot right and then with that you do not get excited you are able to evaluate it rightly you are able to see that you are not that much competent as the other person sharing and then you are try to and then you are able to choose your response with the other similarly somebody is criticizing you you again are able to see the state of competence in the other case if somebody is criticizing you you are again able to see the level of competence of the other and then you rightly evaluate the other and then respond accordingly so in all these situations you are able to respond if you have the right understanding and then i may express my response outside through the body the physiochemical changes the behavior or work of the other or the state of the body has no influence on my state of happiness i am self organized now you can just imagine if you are able to reach this kind of state that whatever changes are taking place either in the body or outside the body has no influence on you on your state of happiness rather by rightly evaluating all these you are able to choose your response you are able to respond to the situation outside then only you can say that you are self organized then only your happiness is going to continue so there are two different possibilities one is that you are enslaved due to lack of right understanding you are misguided through assumptions through preconditionings and then you keep on reacting to all these sensations but if you have the right understanding you are not influenced at all you continue to be in a state of happiness and then you respond in such a way that you are able to complement the other in behavior or you are able to respond in such a way that you are able to take care of the body due to the uh, changes taking place outside the body or inside the body so this way we are able to transform ourselves but to transform ourselves you have to go through this whole exercise and you will observe that in a single day you react so many times not being aware of your sanskars so i need to be clear from here that i need to work for right understanding isn't it unless i have the right understanding i am going to be reactive either inside or outside whether i express it outside or not it is not going to be a state of happiness for me so based on right understanding within i have the right feeling right thought within so my feeling thought is on the basis of right understanding and it is not influenced by any external input i am and i continue to be in harmony in a state of happiness i use the external input to evaluate the state of my body or the state of the world outside and then my desire is definite my feeling is definite i am always clear about my relationship my responsibility so with my body i am clear whether i have to nurture or not so i am able to see that yes every time i have to nurture protect and right to utilize my body with other human being every time i am able to ensure justice mutual happiness through my behavior and with the rest of nature through work i am able to ensure mutual prosperity similarly in the larger order in my participation i am able to ensure my participation in terms of undivided society and universal human order now this may appear to be a far fetched goal for you isn't it but the more you are able to observe this closely and let's say that we all are in that process we are able to respond every time we are able to choose our right conduct every time and this is definiteness of conduct whether it is with the body with other human being with the rest of nature or in the larger order so now with the external input i decide how to be mutually fulfilling to fulfill my definite responsibility my participation under the given situation so i respond every time this is being human that i respond every time and this is possible only when i am able to ensure the right understanding within this is possible only when i am able to awaken to the activities of contemplation understanding and realization so i need to work in that direction but this will help you evaluate your current level of competence whether you are able to do this or not and sure this or not so just ask yourself do you want to respond or react what do you think if you want to respond then you have to do this exercise within you you have to be aware to that extent within you so that you are able to evaluate your sanskars rightly and transform them then only you can be self organized so so far let us recap what we have discussed so in step 1 we discuss that i am there and my body is there and and i am able to get to know about my body through sensation there is an exchange of information 
I am sending instruction to the body and reading sensation from the body. So these are taking place between the self and the body. And the transaction of information is taking place by the decision of the self in both the ways. Whether I instruct the body or I read the sensations from the body. And I hope by now your awareness must have gone up. Yeah, being able to see that, yes, you are the decision maker every time. Then we also observe that there is a distance between me and the sensation. I can read the sensation taking place in any part of the body from where I am, being at a distance from the sensation, right? And this will also help you see that you are there at a distance from the body. So location-wise, if you see, you are there where the body is there. But since you are not the body, okay, the sensation is not there in you. So you can see clearly that you are at a distance from the body. This interaction is temporary in time, not continuous. I pay attention to it from time to time, as and when required, when I assign the importance to it, when I feel that this is necessary. And there's a distance between the self and the body, something that we could observe in step four. Now with this, we'll discuss the step seven in the next practice session. So by now, I think this much must have been clear to you. And this will prepare you for step seven. And in step seven, we are going to take our observation much further. So be prepared for that. And we'll have an assignment now. So the assignment is that observe the three sources of sensation. Observe whether you react or respond to the sensation and try to observe it every moment. Okay, so now we have to raise our level of awareness. So again, you can note down your observation in the journal several times in the course of the day at least every four hours. And I'll say that when you are going through this exercise, you can even make it two hours. Try to note it down every two hours. A phenomenal change. And I will be able to see if you are able to do this very sincerely. So in the practice session today, we try to observe how we react or respond. So if we are enslaved by preconditions and assumptions due to lack of right understanding, we keep on reacting to the different sensations. But if I have the right understanding, then I respond every time, whether it is some event taking place inside the body or outside the body, I respond every time. My conduct is definite. So this is what we discussed in today's session. That will, <clears throat> And in the next session, we'll discuss step seven of exercise two and that will conclude our exercise too. Thank you.